Hello everyone, welcome to my channel. So in today's video, I thought I might do a little bit more work on my closure for my blue advent calendar bunting journal of stitchery. That's a mouthful. I'm starting to build up a few scraps. I've got some pinned together here from the previous number one panel and then a couple bits and pieces from doing number two, the wreath. This circle yo-yo has been kicking around in my tray. Another little leaf, some of these scraps. And I've also got the joy to the wor world, the nativity that I did in the red. This was um, on that pattern and I traced it, but I didn't actually use it. So I thought of actually using it in this. So what I'm gonna do is just pin down some elements and just sort of see where it takes me. So I think I'll start with Joy to the World. Get some pins. I wanna see this little detail on that linen shirt. So I'll just move the Joy to the World back a little bit. We're sort of creeping up now to the center of the piece. So I'm wondering about, you know, some little features. Let's put that little leaf there. I don't know how much stitching I'll do in this video because it just takes so long, but at least if I get it pinned, um, you know, it's, it's in position. I'm gonna create this yo-yo. Yeah, I don't even know why I cut it out. I think I was considering putting yo-yos on the wreath. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> putting some yo-yos on the wreath, but I end up not doing that. So I've got this little guy sitting here. What size is he? And I'm wondering if I probably should cut a couple more out before he disappears. So he's about nine centimetres or three and a half inches. I wonder, maybe I cut. Yeah, I might. I might just cut this out. I'll fold that in half and we'll do two at once. That's smart thinking. Whether I use them both, I don't know, but I know I want some yo-yos to be scattered through this piece. So I'm just gonna whiz around the outside here. Well, there's another selvage. I do like selvages because A, they're interesting pieces of fabric because they're a different texture to the rest so you get like a thicker feel to them sometimes they are quite frayed so makes them interesting and on a snippet piece like this um, you can get you know a little space where you could do some embroidery so I'm a bit of a fan of those I'm just separating separating those and I'm going to do another one in this floral. If I start coughing crazy, I um I've just scoffed. We'll use the word scoff, let's be honest. Scoffed two Kingston biscuits. I went into the lounge to pick up my little scissors here and sitting by my husband's chair was a pack of Kingston biscuits. So obviously last night, the rat has gone to the pantry and found a packet of Kingston biscuits. So of course I spot it and go, oh, what is that? Oh, I may or may not have had some biscuits. So I've opened up the packet well, no, hang on. Don't blame me. <clears throat> it was already open. There's another scrap. I just squared it up, add it to the pile. So just sitting beside me, for those of you overseas that don't know what Kingston biscuits are, I've, I've confiscated it. 
So it's an Australian brand and the factory is actually, um, well, there might be a couple factories, but one of them is in Brisbane and it's actually just across the road from where our Virginia Christmas shop is. So as the day goes on, you can actually smell the biscuits baking and it drives our staff nuts. And some of them can even guess which biscuit, like Ice Fovos or something like that. Well, Kingston biscuits are a bit of a favourite here. So they're a, a little biscuit with um, a chocolate, like ganache sort of flavour inside. So yes, he opened it. The evidence, like the evidence. And look, I'm just going to get biscuits on my needlework. Now let's say I've had two. Allegedly, I've had two. So he's had at least four, maybe five. And they're like little chocolate cream crunchy biscuits. Very sweet, very sickly. You really only eat a couple. And um, you would feel like you've had enough. So yes, that's what just happened a minute before I started filming. There was a Kingston biscuit conversation which resulted in me putting two into my mouth. Anyway, I'm sure you all needed to know that. <clears throat> all right, let's make a couple yo-yos. So I've cut my circles and all I'm gonna do is run the thread around the perimeter of my circle. I'm using my beading needle, which really I shouldn't because it's really sharp. And I will poke myself. And the head of it's small, so it pokes my finger that is dragging it through the fabric all the time. But it's good because it's so long. Another name for them is straw needles, but this is sort of not the smallest, thinnest, longest straw needle needle you can get. It's really more of a milliner's needle, to be honest. <clears throat> Came out of the packet so long ago that I've got really no idea what needles I've got. I just sort of have these few kicking around that I'm using at the moment through this project. And I can sort of pick up a needle that can take wool. I can pick up a needle that can take then right down to beads for fine work. So if you haven't made yo-yos, give them a go. Suffolk Puffs is another name for them. I'm just not sure which country calls them what anymore because everyone's got a different twist on it. When I grew up as a kid in Australia, it was a Suffolk Puff and everyone was making them and turning them into bedspreads and pillowcases, pillow cushions, cushion covers. So now it's just a case of I put my finger in the bottom of it and just draw in, draw in the little puff. Oh, I know why this was left over. I used some of these to make my mushrooms. That's what's going on there. Now I might just open it up a little bit and not pull it tight in because they're really cool to stitch beads into the center of. So I'm just now going to anchor it down to the back of the puff and that will stop it coming apart. I've given myself a little opening. Okay. These are a lot of fun because you can use them for flowers, just decorative elements. I think Rachel had a couple sitting on her wreath at the bottom of the page and the top. They were vintage ones, so they were very cool. These are fresh. But if you did want to get that vintage look because they're very flat, just iron them. Run the iron over them. That creases them nicely so that edge would become very sharp another thing you can do is you can actually cut them so stitch them down and then cut them open and you get this really um, decorative floral like feature about them they're very cool so i might just pin that fellow there i don't know if he'll stay there but it looks good to me the good thing about these little clustery um, snippet roll slash 
I don't know, what did we call these things when we were making them with Anne Brooks? <clears throat> Snippet rolls. Yeah, that's right. So I'm just going to do another one. And then what I'll probably do is find a contrast colour thread, like this one I would use white, and just do some overcast stitch around the edge of it, or I could do a running stitch, like you could actually running stitch it down, or I might do that, that's, haven't done that for ages. So I'll make this one. Next, I'll probably do three. I've still got one spare, and I might just work a bit of a, decorative cluster slash bead slash goodness knows what thing here. <laughs> there is no technical term for all this. We are in uncharted territory. Okay, around we go. I apologize if you're finding this tedious. You could probably make them in advance and then sit down to your piece and have them. Or if you're, you know, got a colour scheme happening with this journal of stitchery, you could just spend an evening making a few. Hexagons are good too. You could probably put a few of them in. They're fun to make. Little itty bitty hexagons and then just piece them onto your background. I want to work a bit of lace into this too because... Lace is part of the project for me, so I definitely want to have some of that appearing on this cover. It's sort of going to be, I think, quite pretty because it's going to have a little bit of everything that I use through the whole project. So it's going to be like six months worth of yumminess, I think, by the time it's finished. Now this one here I might bring in tight and close it. Because I think the beads might get a bit lost in it. And I don't have any white beads. They're mainly blue. So I think I'm going to cinch it in real tight. And maybe put some white fibres. Oh, I know what I can do. Here we go. She's off on a tangent. Well, I've got the needle and thread happening here. <clears throat> I'm going to grab some of this eyelash yarn. Yep. And just snip it off. And I'm going to, this is a bit fiddly. There are no rules with this particular. So I'm going to just twist it around in my fingers and attempt to bring the needle up through it. Oops, technical problem. Start again. The cotton is on the wrong side of the yo-yo. So one did not take her time and come back up through the center. Okay, so now I'm going to pick up my little circle or halo wreath of fibrous eyelash yarn, catch it with my needle, take it back down to the yo-yo. You're probably wondering what is she doing? Now I just got to get a few little stitches in there to hold. You now my needles come unthreaded. Every time I get like, you know, excited, like I've got an idea and the stitching is the the boring bit quickly get it stitched because I've got another idea and another idea my needle comes unthreaded therefore I have to stop and I lose the thrill does that make sense silly isn't it it comes fudge so I'm just catching all of those fibers there in the center now what I'm thinking is where is the little flower? I think I had a. Oh, I use this. I do like this trim. And it's got a little daisy. Take a bit off. 
and just place it here because I can see potential coming there. Okay, so let's get this little daisy out of there. Yes, fudgy. Puss, puss. No need. Okay, so let's pick up our yo-yo. We're going to embellish that with then now a little flower. So there we go. So that just then stitches down, just catching a few little stitches. And we've got a yo-yo that has <clears throat> a little floral element in the center. So you can do so much with these yo-yos. You can bead them, you can add pieces of embroidery, you can do turkey work. If you're wondering what that is, that's just lots and lots of stitches, but instead of going back down, they become loopy and then you snip them and they become fluffy, like it looks nearly like a pom-pom. So your center of your yo-yo could have, you know, all sorts of different textures. If you want to see a lot of um, turkey work, go back to the very beginning and watch the videos to do with the sampler because the girls take us through turkey work. Okay, so I'm just ending that off. So that's embellished to some degree already. So that, that can slide in there. We'll just pin him. So you can put little beads around the outside of the yo-yos. Oh, you can do so much with them. I do like this piece like that little flower. I'm just trimming off the zigzag snip that the manufacturer did on it. I'm gonna slide that under there. Yeah, I like that. So I pin that down, pin my yo-yo back down. And I could do with something to come across the bottom there I don't really want to cover that flower so I might just tuck that underneath pin that I do have a straight edge happening here which is not a bad thing I could add some lace i'm just reaching into my bucket here i've got this lace i haven't used it yet in any of my panels but i'm pretty sure i will so i'm going to take the punt that i do and i'm just going to tuck it under that edge like so maybe snip it there and it'll just be a little decorative feature that will sneak in there. Once I start stitching down, I could bring it to the front. I could leave it tucked in underneath those pieces, but I'll decide when I get to that. But at the moment, I know that that's in position as a possibility. Could do with a little bit of lace over here and around there. Maybe I cut a couple of these off. And tuck that into there. See, there's really, I don't know, what am I trying to say? There's no rhyme or reason to it. It has to be random. That's the beauty of this type of work. You can use all your bits and pieces. Let's get that in there. So we'll just pin him down. Oh, that's not even pinning properly. That's one of those really long pins and it's just gone straight into the mat. 
I need some more pins. I don't know where they've all gone. I know they break down and bits come off. So let's get um, maybe, what's that piece? That looks good. Let's get him in behind all this. Yep. Um, I do like those little flowers. Maybe there, and they can come out from behind there. Could do with some more stripes somewhere, so we'll just cut that. Maybe that. No, I think it needs to. No, no. Then it looks like looks like they're going up, and then when I did that, I can see that it looks like it's all going up. So let's get that tucked in under there and maybe along a little bit so that that little flower bit needs to come higher that's better you don't want too many straight edges if you can help it what I mean by that that blue is up in the air there where it was lining up too much with my um, see there's a straight edge there but I'm gonna let it slide might bring that no I might put a piece of lace there what have we got I was using this on the nativity scene and I do like it. It's technically not in this one, but does it matter? No. It's been part of the whole project, so I'm wondering if I can just put that through there. Anyway, I've got a corner. See how I've got a corner there? Maybe, maybe I can do something tricky with that. Let's just pin it for now using that corner. Maybe I'll pull it over a bit to there. Maybe that then could be a little embroidery to pop in there there's that pepper wolfing so if that goes up there we've now sort of started to create a whole new zone a little picture zone for something that could go there pepper pepper might put just move that back a bit that's just the excess so that if I picked it up I could move, I might slide that under there. The marman must be going by Pepper's announcing. I can hear dogs in the distance who are also announcing that that marman is in the vicinity. Where's my other yo-yo? So I'm still yet to do this yo-yo there's my needle and thread so you can just see how i'm just literally pinning random bits and pieces down and once i sort of get a, a little area sort of done that'll be enough and then i'll go back and do all of the uh, decorative stitching as in the straight lines i'll then come back through and look at what beads and pieces could be added to this yo-yo area. So I'm just going to whip around. How are we going for time? 
24 minutes. I watched a video, I think it was um, 49 dragonflies and it was one hour and a half and I thought, wow, you must have great internet connection, Barbara, because there is no way I'd get that video up in a day here. I mean, it's just terrible. I really feel for those who are working from home now due to COVID, a lot of businesses have their staff just working at home. And the, the government says, oh, the internet will be fine. It can handle. It can't. It has just got worse. Such a shame. So I try and keep my videos no more than that 50 minute mark, 55 minutes. Because some days that'll go up in a couple hours. Other days it'll take nine hours to get it up. I sort of come up with one idea as I... I flip the video across to my mobile phone and then I turn Wi-Fi off and just use 5G as if I'm out in the middle of the city and I can upload a video sometimes in 20 minutes. So it'll go from nine hours at home on the Wi-Fi to 20 minutes on my mobile phone. Now admittedly, I've got to be very careful because my plan only allows so much of that type of activity where home is unlimited but um, I sort of do it until I get a little message from Telstra to say you are close to exceeding your allocated time. And then I'll just sort of have a look at the calendar. And if it's at the end of the month, I'm like, well, if I wait, you know, a week, I'll be rolled over into the new month, the new plan. And I can go again until told otherwise. That has helped a lot especially when you're doing daily videos. I'm sure everyone's got similar stories with the internet and technology. It's crazy. So there's my next yo-yo. So I might, might tuck him in Oh no, it's too close to there. Maybe we need a little bit of... What have we got there? Oh, here's that piece where it was annoying me that I didn't have the whole leaf pattern. So what I'll do is I'll bury that leaf under that yo-yo. So it'll look like it's there, but not. There you go. Pin run out of pins okay so I have a bit of a unusual spot here maybe I put some lace there that's cute let's let's put that in there Sort of ties in where I've used a few down there. Should probably do with a little bit more of that trimmed off. Okay, so what fabric haven't I used? I've got a bit of this dark blue. that can slide in there tuck him in like so another pin do with some more lace Maybe I'll put a bit of this on. I do like it. Just 
think I need another piece of fabric. Probably put that there like that. It can creep out in that direction. Just doesn't feel like it's right. Maybe that's got to go more like I've got threads everywhere. Maybe it's got to go more like that. Something's not right. What's not right? This this inner section here is a bit odd. So it either needs to disappear, but then that looks odd. This blue looks odd then. Maybe it's just got to be a small piece. Hmm, maybe it's the wrong colour. What do we got here? A little bit of paisley. Let's just square that up. Yeah, that's better. Put that little bit of paisley there. Then maybe this will look better. Get rid of those pinking sheer edges. So if that then maybe slides in there. Yeah, that's better. Yeah. Then this lace, maybe it's, maybe that gets trimmed off of there. No, don't trim it. We've run out of fabric. Here we go. Here's a spot. Let's get that there. In, sort of creeping up to the top edge of my piece now. Let's pin that guy there. I do want to get this lace in, but maybe I've got to knock back that spot there. Let's trim him back out there and lay this lace now in there with that yo yo. And pin that. That's better. Okay. So where are we at? Just looking up at the camera. Can do with a little bit more of this foliage peeking around. And the other thing I could do with is some crocheted elements. So I might just have a look in my box of tricks here. I feel like that needs something. Maybe even there. Um, I keep looking at this piece. I haven't found a home for that. It's exactly how I got it. It's just a corner of something. Maybe it can be an element somewhere in the project. I'll pop it in my box so it's under my nose and I'm looking at it. What have we got? I really love this stuff too. It's a really interesting texture. I might just pin that there. I don't know if it'll stay there, but no, it's not going to stay there. Maybe I've got to cut that down. Make it a little bit less. Mm. Don't mind it actually down there. 
Just as another layer of something interesting. I'm going to pin it on down there. And you'll say, but you're covering up what you've just done. Well, that's the, the trick of it. I might just tuck that little bit I cut off up in there. So it's nearly like an, a fringe that is coming up out of the border of the cream. That little bit can go there. Oh, I like that. Oh, I'm getting down to the last few pins. Okay. So that's sort of put another little piece of something there. All right, now let's get a few more of these little guys. I still haven't found my crocheting bits like I was going to, so I'm just gonna cut that flower. And have a look in my box here of goodies. Um, 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 um. Sorry guys, bear with me. So there's a little piece of crocheting. I like that. That might look pretty coming out from underneath there. Yes. Put it around the right way. I like that. Such a good way of getting rid of all your bits. So there we go. That bit's in there. What else have I got? Got some tatting here. But I don't think I've cut into it, so we'll just keep that for a moment. I do like these types of shapes too. They're off the border of doilies. Gives you some lineal lineal lines. I just cut a piece of it. And we'll leave it in the pile. Doily. I'm looking for the round. Oh, this piece has been hanging around for a while too. It's a, a beauty. You could use it in its entirety. Then you've got this little, little ladder-like piece. And then within that lace, there's all these little scrolls. So that little piece there is interesting. Mm. Oh, I like it on there, underneath. Oh, I've run out of pins. Okay. Whether that could be couched on in there, be a bit tricky, but could look nice. All oh, these pins, they're so bendy. They, they're good for pinning a butterfly to a board. That's about it, which I'm not going to do. They're too long. They're too um, wicky. These ones are a little bit better. Oops, come on, in you go. Just to hold it there. Like I said before, if you don't like it, it's only pinned at the moment. It'll be one of those things where I hop up, look at it. Might even continue that out onto that edge where the button, why not? Don't have to stay within the confines. That's definitely going to be snipped there. This gives me another little bit. Let's poke. If you can see, I'm going to poke this little bit in under here. Just as a little detail. And it's a scrap, but now it's got a home. So I'll just pin that. Pin that little guy there. Once beads and buttons and dingle dangles go everywhere. See how we've got that there, um, that fibre um, on that little guy. 
might do something up here where I bring the fibre this time under the yo-yo. I hope you can see that. Drop it down a bit. So I'm now pulling that underneath the yo-yo. So as that yo-yo is stitched down into position, it'll have all these little fibres out from underneath it instead of in centre, in the centre of it. Just another way of using eyelash yarn. Okay, so what else can we add? Let's find a spot for that right there. There's no rhyme or reason, guys. I'm just pinning it down because we can. The busier and the, the crazier it looks, the better it'll come overall. And because this is sort of the front of my panel, to have a bit of a thing happening through that zone will look really good. I'm just going to snip another couple of these little bristles off because we could have more foliage peeking out. Oops, what's the right side? It's like it's alive. I think that's actually upside down. There it is. It looks flat in colour. So I'm just going to spin that around. Don't think it'll matter too much design-wise. You're probably saying, Corinne, there is no design here. This is just a mishmash. And if that's what you're thinking, that's perfect. Because that means you're not thinking. And I'm just placing it down. Okay. What else have we got that we could poke in here? Got a little bit more of this spot. Might as well. Pop him up here. That fabric will fit in there. That lace will sit over it. Okay. So I've got another yo-yo here that I can make. Or... Oh, here's some nice lace. Wonder where I could put a bit of this. That's pretty. It's not the right colour. I keep picking it up. I really like it. But next to this blue, it looks purple. I've got to get rid of it. Put it away completely. It's just not fitting with the design. However, this lace does. I feel like I could put a little snippet of that in here. Just to break up. That zone, I need to pull that pin out and just tuck it in under there. Yep. That'll hold it. lots of pins when you do this because you can sooner go later going to have to pick it up and dangle it in front of your face to stitch it all down mm, I do like that piece sitting there too Is that down there it's in snip Maybe I 
go the other side. Yeah. If I tuck it around. Is that crazy? Now tuck it around that button. Yeah. Pin. I really like the randomness, randomness of this type of project because you're always thinking about composition when you're doing our panels. Watch your background. How does it look? Is that lace upside down? No. How is it going to come together? What's at the top? What's at the bottom? What's in the middle? What's in the foreground? What's in the background? So all of these things are going through your mind when you're piecing together some of your panels, unless you're doing a, a real random piece, sort of like this. Well, then that might not be the case. You'll be, you know... I'm just going to lift that up there, up and around. Yep, I like that. Where when you do a snippet roll, it's just anything goes. That's what I love about it. Because it sort of gives your brain a bit of a break. Does that make sense? I wonder... I just now put in a blank piece of fabric like this just to have a spot where I could stitch something. I think I will. I don't know what will be there. It might be just a word. It might be just a floral sketch. Who knows? but it's a spot where I can write something and stitch it. I'm just looking at this piece here. I'm wondering if that would fit. If I trim that back a little bit. What else could I put there? Do I need to think about that at this stage? Do I just work with what I've got so far? That's got to come up. Maybe that's... Do I bring... Do I bring this piece right up so that it finishes off that lace as well? Hmm. That's better. A little bit of paisley can peek into that space. That's all right. That'll make it look like it was not an afterthought if that paisley comes over at all. Get my needle out of the way. Am I even on camera? That lace then comes up and over there. That looks good. I like that. So I need something sort of to slide in here. Maybe it's a nice big piece of fabric that I can always trim it down if needed. Yeah, I might just pin that there for now. I can always cut it back if it's too big but I'll at least get it stitched down maybe even where my pins are just that zone and this gets cut off um, or do I leave it there I feel like I need something to come in under that piece of lace um, just looking at my fabrics what could slide under that doesn't compete with it, but complements? Maybe it's a piece of this. I'll just cut a rectangle out. I 
and it's neutral enough that the lace will sort of hold its own. So I'm just going to unpin that little bit of lace there and slide in this guy under it. That's better. And maybe that goes over the top. That slides in there. You can pin that. And pin that don't like that so that's gonna definitely go over the top and then maybe this comes across yeah I like that for now anyway so I'm just gonna trim this off here Maybe that can sit up there under that lace. So I start to build up the background there. No, it sits too. Lower this down. I'm sliding it in up the top here, but it's too close to that piece of calico. I need another color up there in the blue family because otherwise it'll just be too blendy blend. back down the bottom I'm just playing with this piece I think it was that way but I'm gonna go that way I'm gonna let a little bit of the linen underneath poke through on that piece of crochet I think that looks good down there okay I'm just looking at the camera on the, the video up on the TV that looks good like I could do more in this zone, but I'll leave it at that. No, I won't. I've just picked up this little bit of lace. I'll leave it at that once this sits in. And that will be the end of my video. I'll go away now and I'll stitch. Don't even know if I like that now. Oh, I don't know. Maybe it's got to go that way. Who knows? I need to stop now and work on what I do know to be correct and looking good. I like it like that. Okay, let's leave it at that. Okay, everyone, thank you very much for joining me. It's coming together my snippet enclosure. So I'll um, sit down now and do a little bit of embroidering and some beading and who knows. So you probably won't see this for a few days because there's hours of work in amongst all this. Thank you very much and I will see you all in the next video. Bye for now.